welcome to another episode of the superhero supernatural flow you have entered into the fortress of solitude where you'll find anything but the norm join me as we go to this clip now we've been talking about hope we understand that hope is not a wimpy word we understand that hope really means your vision it means the plan it means that thing that is dangling in front of you that thing that you look at every day that you move towards every day your focus your um uh, uh being purposeful amen my god my god my god I, I, there's some things that we have to birth in this earth and I, I we were in prayer just a little bit ago and i saw the baby uh in the womb and God began to say, you got to have singleness of purpose and focus because there's only one birth canal. You don't have two birth canals and three birth canals. It got to come down that single birth canal. Amen. And so we want to have that singleness of heart. But I want to talk a little bit about what Haywood, uh, my son, Chosen to Inspire, spoke on last week. He spoke on the fact that we need our own vision. Amen. We can't ride on the visions of other people. Amen. We have to stop riding on everyone else's visions. We have to have our own vision. What is your passion? Amen. We have to start turning some things down coming into this new year. We're going to have to start turning some things down, some people down, and we have to focus on implementing our vision. Somebody calls that non-negotiables. Like this is my non-negotiable. On this particular day, I'm not going anywhere. On this particular day, I'm not going to, you get invited here, there, and the other place, but you know what you have on your plate. You know what you have to do and you know what God has said to you. So it becomes your non-negotiable. Uh, we cannot be a yes man all the time. We can't say yes all the time. We're gonna have to have some no people Sometimes you're going to have to have somebody say no around you. And that also brings me to your circle. Got too many people that's got too many yes men in their circle. Getting away with all kind of stuff because people scared to step up to you to say anything. But we need people. We need, uh, uh, we need our own. Amen. In the early days of the apostles, they said they went to their own. When they went through hardships and different things that was going on, they went to their own, their own village, their own people. Man, it's nice to have your own. Those people who speak your language, those people that when you speak, they know what you're talking about. Those people that finish and start, you finish and you start each other's sentences, amen? And so your, your, your circle may have to change. And we talked about that in the last uh, three weeks. We talked about your circle changing. We talked about your village changing, amen? And we're, we're talking about acclimating to where God wants us to be. We're talking about reaching to new heights, higher heights, deeper depths. We are riding on the heights with him, amen and amen and amen. We got to stop. There's something else I wrote down. It says we got to stop taking what the pastor says, uh, only, but we have to take it and we have to apply it immediately to our hearts. Amen. If not, we're just, you know, like the baby that just keeps nursing. There's no growth. There's no growth there. And you're just nursing at the pastor's breast for the rest of your life. No, the pastor is there to get you to a certain weight, to get you to a certain age. And so that you can start feeding yourself. You can start coming to the Lord for yourself. We're always going to have our pastors there. We're going to have our apostles and our prophets and all that, but it, we're supposed to be bringing each other into um, truth. We're supposed to be uh, inspiring each other to that next level. Amen. Not that I, I say one thing and then all of a sudden I give you one chapter. You got to come back to me for the whole book. No, I'm giving you something to inspire you to get to 
the face of God. Because anytime anybody says anything to you, it should always be you going into the face of God and saying, God, you know, this person said this, I read this, or I saw this, Lord, what are you saying? And we understand that our stopping place and our uh, end all and be all is the word of God. So what we do is we take that measuring line and that plumb line and we go into the word for ourselves. Now, God has not stopped talking. He been talking all week yet again. And what I'm realizing, he said, like, hey, it don't matter how you feel. <laughs> it don't matter what's going on. You could be sitting up here feeling tired and, you know, because I was a bit tired this week, but it didn't stop him. Even on the bed, even on our very bedroom, on the bed, sleeping, having dreams and visions and just the Lord saying some things over and over and over in my spirit. Amen. So his word is going to go forth. The word of the Lord is the word of the Lord and it will go forth. Amen. And so I, I, I want to come to another word that hit me on Tuesday. Tuesday night, the Lord woke me up. So what I want to do is I want to take you back to Tuesday. I want to take you back to some stuff. The Lord knocked me upside my head and woke me up. I kind of felt a little bit like Samuel when, and I talked to y'all about this before where, you know, God was calling Samuel's name and he was hearing the audible voice of God. And it was, it was so strong that he was hearing him and he didn't know the, the, the voice of God yet. And he kept running to, um, the priest, Eli, his priest, the person that he served in the temple, Eli. And he kept running to him and saying, you call me, you call me. I kind of felt like that. I woke up. I said, Oh my God. I didn't know what day it was. You know, usually when I'm sleeping, I know, the, you know, the next day is Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday. I didn't know where I was, what was going on. I was just so out of it. And all night long, all I heard was, I am changing the trajectory. This thing rang in my spirit all night long. I was sleeping. Any of y'all heard the word of the Lord coming to you even as you sleep? I was asleep. And I was hearing, God is changing the trajectory. I am changing the trajectory. And I said, I got to look this thing up. And the next day, I began to look at it. I began to look at it. And the trajectory basically is the path followed by a projectile flying or an object moving like a missile. Under the action of given forces, the synonyms for this is course, arc, curve, missile, path, projectile, flight, vector field, velocity, center of gravity and alignment projectile a missile designed to be fired from a rocket or a gun okay so this is meaning a lot more than a path changing we understand when we look at that that this means more than just a path changing you know i could sit here and i say oh i've been working as an administrative assistant or i've been working as an executive assistant for 10 years and now my my career path is changing you know or you might say i've been working in the medical field and now i want to go write a book so my career path is changing but when i read this this is indicative of something else there's something else going on here when i look at this and as i said um i said my ears are popping and anytime my ears begin to pop it, it's like you're beginning to take off uh, in an airplane. Uh, you're beginning to gain altitude. Your altitude is changing. You're coming to a different level. Amen. And it's just like you're being in that plane and the plane is beginning to take off. When I look at this and it says the trajectory is changing, it's it, it depicts missile or rocket or some type of uh, a thrust forward, some type of velocity, speed. I, my God, my God, my God, my God. It depicts that there is a forward thrust, a projectile, a missile depicts speed and velocity. God said to me some years ago, 
if you move in my love, you move in my light. Light, love, and life are three words when you're speaking about Jesus is interchangeable. They, what does that mean? They mean? It means they mean the same thing. If I'm talking about love, I'm talking about life of Jesus. If I'm talking about the love of Jesus, I'm talking about the life of Jesus. If I'm talking about the love of Jesus, I'm talking about the light of Jesus. Now let's look at that word light. Amen. I remember one time I was, I, oh man, I was under a, a time of, whew, you know, God said we supposed to love everybody, but it, it, you know, he didn't say it was going to be easy. And there was a time that I, you know, I had to train myself and I would be walking on my exercise run and certain ones would come to me and I said, I love you and I love of Christ. I would talk to them just like they were sitting there. They could have stabbed me in the back. It didn't matter. I said, I love you and I love of Christ. I love you and I love of Christ. And I just kept saying it over and over and over and over. I said, I'm going to say this thing until my, 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 my soul gets a clue because my spirit is already there, but my soul need to get a clue. Because I need to be transformed by the what? Renewing of my mind. And so as I began to say it over and over again, I said, oh, no, 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 no. Yes, uh, 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 I love you in the love of Christ. The Holy Spirit started talking to me. He said, do you know that love, light, and life are interchangeable? He started talking to me about light. He says, lightning moves at 186,000 miles per second. Amen. And he began to say to me, he said, okay, he said, uh, he said, now, if you move in my love, you're going to move in my light and you're going to move in lightning. There's a lot of times that the Lord will have you move and come into a place and you begin to speak and you begin to do some things. And it was just like lightning. And they're looking at you and go, oh my God, what was that? But the lightning, have you ever tried to catch lightning or look at lightning long enough? Lightning moving too fast. And so he says, when, you, when, when, when my lightning hits, all they're going to hear after that is the thunder. It's just the noise. Oh, what, what was said? What happened here? What was this? And no, 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 no. Thunder always comes. The noise always comes after the lightning, but the lightning is first. The love is first. Amen. And he says, if you move in my love, you're going to move at the speed of light. Thrust forward with speed and velocity. Whatever tries to get into the way, ah, he is going to override. There's a word here. There's a word here. There's a word here. If you move in the speed of light, it can't catch you. You can't do nothing with you because you are overriding some things. You're overriding some normal speeds and some natural forces to override. Override any obstacle that gets in our way when we are performing the things of God. You can't do nothing with lightning. If you blink, you'll miss it. If you blink, you will miss it. Amen. And it says, we have the spirit's energy. Once we plug into the surge, which is the Holy Spirit, we will be riding on the spirit's energy until the word has gone forth. After we have completed what thus says the Lord, we are overriding the physical by riding on the spirit. Now, there's some thing. I feel like I'm laying foundation because I don't feel like I can get too many amens, but it's okay because sometimes you have to lay a foundation. God says we are moving at the speed of light when we are moving in love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It's not envious. It's not jealous. It does not, um, it does not find fault. It does not bring back um, things that was done to it. it. It Love, love, love. Amen. And God says, when you're moving in my love, you're moving in light. Now he starts to ask me a question on Tuesday night as I laid there. He starts to say to me, he says, okay, when, think back about all the things that I've said to you, and I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. He said, think back about all the things that I have said to you through the years. I've been saved over 20 years and there's some things that God has been saying. And when he says it, it's like, I remember it like he said it yesterday. I remember it like, I, like he said it on yesterday. Amen and amen. 
And he said, the reason being, and I don't know why I need to go here, but there's some words that people have said to you. There's some words that people have given you and you remember it like it was yesterday. It could have been a scripture. It could have been a word. Then there's some other folks that says something to you and it just sounds just like noise. It sounds just like noise. Amen. The reason it sound like noise is because it was just the thunder afterwards. There was no lightning. There was no, there was no lightning, but he says, if you think that you don't have to think too hard about what I said. Amen. As the Lord begins to tell me that these things are just like they happened yesterday. And I'm like, God, what's that about? What is that about? Why is it resonating with me? Like you just had a conference with me yesterday. A thousand years is like a day and a day like a thousand years. And we understand that the glory realm and in the glory realm, faith is now. So your present and your past and your future are all standing side by side. That's why I didn't feel like it was years and years ago. It felt like it was just yesterday. Amen. And I'm heating up again. When I think about override, I think about riding on the heights with him. I think about riding on that current. Amen. Being a being somebody that got music in school, we understand that velocity means more than speed. Velocity is, is, is a word that means more than speed. It means it's the heaviness of it all. And I'm saying, but didn't he say that when Jesus returns, will he find faith on the earth? I heard somebody say, that's going to be the only currency that's going to be in this earth is faith. We look at these words, faith, hope, and love, and we're looking at a wimpy, watered down, worldly uh, through worldly glasses when we listen to this, when we hear this, the enemy has proceeded into yet again, twisting up some things. He's twisted and perverted some things. You know, when I first came into the kingdom, I said, I'm ready, God, let's go, let's go. I, 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 who, who, who behind we got to kick? Where's the enemy? Let's, let's kick that butt. Let's do, God said, it's going to start with love. Love? What? Love? Because we have a watered down idea about what love is. And he began to say, okay, if you're going to be powerful, you have to walk in my love. You're, if you're going to walk in power, you have to walk in love. You're not going to be able to do any of those things unless you walk in love. But I had been given the worldly version of love. Love, the, the, the worldly version of love is just, you know, you see these people walking up and down. If any of y'all ever been in New York or so and you've been on a subway and you see them walking with the white sheet, the white uh, 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 robes and they got the flowers in their hair and they playing the tambourine. And, and this is the idea that I thought of like, no, what, you know, come on. I want to, I want to kick some, some spiritual, but let's go, let's go. I'm ready. Duh, 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 duh. Because I've, I saw things go forth in the kingdom and I saw ministers and stuff go forth. I said, I, I want to do that. That's me. That's me. So I was born to do that. Oh, I could do that better. You know, you get a little cocky. Oh, I could do that. I could do that. God had to sit me down and say, Kay, I'm not teaching you about hate. I'm teaching you about love. You've been given the wrong version of what love is. And so he has to now reprogram us to teach us about Faith, hope, and love. We've been moving through these words really quickly. We talked about hope. We talked a little bit um, about faith. Faith, man, you ain't going to be able to do nothing without faith. He said, I didn't ask you, can you afford it? I asked you, can you believe for it? Faith. Faith. It's going to get to the point where you, money ain't going to be able to buy it. You're going to have to have faith. You're going to have to have that childlike faith that says, God, that's it. I'm calling it out. I see that thing and I'm that's mine. And it's now. It's not tomorrow. It's not. Listen, it's now because now faith, now faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen now. When God showed me about faith, he showed me it stood Side by side, I 
was in my bathroom looking into the mirror and all of a sudden I wasn't there no more and I was standing in eternity and I was standing in the present the past was standing right next to me and the future was standing right next to me they all stood side by side now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen so a thousand years is like a day to him and a day like a thousand so i am listen you've gone through some things I, I got so many notes here but my god you've gone through some things you've they, they, you know, we talked about it. We talked about, you know, things that people are letting go. And I think that's what's been happening for the last three weeks. He's been asking us to give them some things up. My daughter said the most profound thing. She said, um, she said some things, some things that didn't turn out this weekend as she wanted them to turn out. And she said something. She said, the only thing I can control is my faith and my work ethic. My faith in God and the way I move forward in my work ethic. I can't control nothing else. The moment she said that, I went into tears because I said, it's like weights dropped off of me. Because we try to control stuff to say, oh my God, it's going to work out like this. It's going to work out like that. Uh-uh. Just drop them weights, baby. Because remember I said, we are in... A, a runway we're in a, an airport and we're listen the people with the flags that clearing you for takeoff they right there and they're clearing us for takeoff but we can't take off with the weights amen we can't take off like lightning with the weights and this is what the lord is saying and showing amen and she said that thing and I started crying because obviously I had I had some weights on me. Obviously, I had been trying to hold on to some things. And the moment she said that, it hit me. And I just guess what we did? Drop the weights. Amen. But God showed us. I, I saw us on fire. There was some fire this morning. And I said, God, what? I still don't know exactly what all of this is, but I saw fire. Fire burns. Fire Fire exposes, fire reveals, but fire burns the dross. It brings the dross to the to the to the top so that it can be scooped away. Amen. And in any type of uh when you're when you're doing the process of 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 purification of gold and maybe you want to make some jewelry, you can't just start out with raw gold. The way it looks is ugly. You take raw gold out of the mountain somewhere, it's ugly. You can't put that on somebody's neck. It's got to go through a process. It's got to go through a process. It's a smelting pot. And then you take that pot, you got the gold in it. It has to be heated up to a certain degree for it to even melt. It won't melt unless the fire is turned up to a certain degree. And once it's turned up, then what happens is the pure of the pureness of the gold begins to separate from the dross or the impurities of the go but the fire got to be turned up and i saw fire this morning so i ask you know people that's watching this right now is it really what you think it is that's on fire or is it something that god is asking you to let go of is it something that god is asking you to drop because i'm telling you that's all that that all got to do with love that all got to do with the love of God. God will come up and walk up on you and say, can you leave that alone? Could you drop that for me? There's plenty of times the Lord asked me to give things up that I done labored over. I labored over this thing like it was my child. I labored over it like it was a baby. And then you, he walk up on me as sweet as he is. How are you going to say no to Jesus? And he sit up there and he said, but can you let that go? Can you close up that house and move here? Can you close up that and move? can you go ahead and rent that out? Or can you go ahead and sell that and move here and go here? And I've had to do that. Amen. Because the plane is on the runway. The guys with the flags are clearing the way for you. My God, my God. This may just be the very thing that the Lord is saying. Listen, he says your trajectory is changing. You're not going to be moving in the same path and you're not going to be moving at the same speed. Your speed is changing. Your velocity is changing. Not only are you getting faster, but you're getting weighty. Ah, uh, that kabod. We talked about that 
uh, K-A-B-O-W-D, kabod, kabod, presence of God. It's talking about his glory. It's talking about the glory realm and it's a, his kabod presence. Velocity does not only depict speed, it depicts weight. You're getting weighty. You're getting deeper, man. But we have to let something, man, I have so many notes in here that I'm ready to jump into and God is, I don't, I don't feel the, you know, I don't feel to go ahead with a lot of this stuff because what he's saying is that we still have some things that we have to drop. We still have some things that has to be let go of. And my God, when the fire starts to burn, when that fire starts to burn, it, it starts to reveal the things that he wants let go of. Listen, God said something else this week. For those who have, because I feel like I'm talking to different people here. For those who have let go, <laughs> I want to move on to this, Jesus. For those who have let go and said, you know what? I give this thing up in the name of Jesus. Um, Isn't there a scripture that says no man that gives up mother, father, brother, sister, home, land, jobs, you know, I'm paraphrasing, um, uh, 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 family, no man who gives up all of this for my name and for the gospel will fail to receive a hundredfold of lands and home and family and mother and brother and sisters and brothers and children and all of these things and jobs they will not fail to receive a hundredfold, both in this time and the time to come. So when you when you're you're not really giving anything up, there's not really uh, anything that's being give up because once you once you drop it, it's like a seed, and a hundredfold is coming back to you. <laughs> I mean, a hundredfold. That's that's strong. A hundredfold. Amen. And so. God said something else to me this weekend. He said double. He said double. He says double. We're not going to stay long because I really truly feel like this is just a foundational thing that's being laid down today because I can tell you all day, I could say speak to you all day long about love. I can speak to you all day long about what God has for you. I can speak to you all day long, but until the rose colored glasses are dropped, you just don't see it. And it's like explaining those of you who have natural sight. There's a lot of people that got natural sight, but they are still blind. But those of you who have natural sight, you know, we take for granted blind people. Think about it, how it would look, how it would be for a blind person. They've never seen what you've seen. So if I, if I sit here and try to describe to you what God has down the road, it's like me trying to describe to somebody that is blind what a sunset looks like, but they've never seen a sunset. How can I, how can I explain that? How can I tell you what a color looks like? How can I tell you what different colors look like? You know, and so until those rose colored glasses come on, until we, and remember, you're not going to see until you say, yes, Lord, because then where would your faith be? Why would you need faith now? How would you, how was your faith strengthened? Amen. So it wasn't until they put their foot into the Jordan. That's when the, the river started to recede. When they had that flood, you know, the Jordan was at flood stage and the, children of Israel had to pass over. He said, go ahead, put your foot in, put my foot in. Do you see the waters that's raging? This flood stage, it's going to carry me away. No, put your foot in because I want you to understand that you're not, I'm not going to show it to you until you take a step. I'm not going to show it to you until you, you do, you put into practice what I've given you. You put some type of effort to what I've given you. And it's when they put their foot in that's when the waters began to subside. And so this is how he's always done it like this. He don't, he don't sit here and give it to you and say, cause you wouldn't have faith. <sighs> Amen. But for those who have said, you know what? I'm going on with the Lord. God has said double faithful 
argue over a few things and now enter into the joy or the rest of your Lord. Amen. It's time for promotion, y'all. It's time for promotion. I can go into different things that I've seen all week, but we got to follow the spirit of the Lord. And I believe that's the birth canal right there. He said to us in prayer, he said, you only got but one birth canal. You ain't got five or six of them. You know, one baby to come out, one birth canal. Let's push this baby out. Yeah, man. And it just depicts, um, it depicts a purpose. It depicts a focus. Amen. But in Isaiah 40, 40, should we start there? Nope. Let's start in Isaiah 61, 7. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. Instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land. First Samuel 1 and 5, but to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her. He loved her. Ah, my God. And it says, and the Lord had closed her womb. That's another story altogether. But he closed her womb because he wasn't after her womb. He wasn't after her baby. He was after the underlying issues in her life. And sometimes your womb got to get closed. And sometimes some, some things have to get burned so that you can get to the underlying issue so that he can expose. Because if he told you, you wouldn't even believe him. So certain things had to transpire to expose some things of the heart. And once the heart, it comes up out the heart, now he could point at it and say, you see that? Not in a harsh way, but in a loving way. You see that? That's the thing that opposes me. That's the thing that you kind of have it in front of me, kind of have it in front of me. But I'm bringing this to you because I have another place for you to go. I'm bringing this to you because I have another place to show you. And so that is an obstacle. And so that obstacle has to be re removed. It's just like giving your baby um, when um, um, Abraham had to give up Isaac. He had to, he had to give up Isaac. And when his son, he bound up his son and he was bringing his son over and put him on the altar. His, his son looked at him and said, daddy, where's the, I see everything. I see the altar. I see all the stuff, but where's the, where's the sacrifice dad? And he looked at him and he said, God himself, God himself will provide the sacrifice. God is saying to us, that if we give these things up, he says, comfort, comfort, my people, says your God, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her forced labor has been completed. Her iniquity has been pardoned and she has received from the hand of the Lord double from all her sins. Voice calling in the way, in the, in the, um, there's a voice of one calling, prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness, make straight, my God, that word effortless or ease was coming to us. The highway for our God in the desert. This reminds me of the wall of Jer Jericho. When they followed the instructions of God, they went straight in. They didn't dash their foot on the stone. They didn't trip over anything. It said they went straight in. This is a time, and I, I feel this is a short time. We, we Last couple of weeks, we've been going like over an hour, but I feel like this is it. I, I truly feel like this is it. God is telling us love. He's, he's telling us that um, if we're moving in his love, we're moving in his speed. We're moving in his light. However, there may still be things that the Lord is saying, my God, uh, to let go of because the plane is in the, it's at the runway and the guys with the flags, they're waving and they're saying you're clear for takeoff. Amen. You're clear for takeoff. When he said that to me, and I took it, when he said that to me this week, I took it personal. I I, heard, I felt, I felt the pride of God. Can I, I mean, we ain't bragging or nothing, but I felt, I felt that. I felt the love of God saying, enter my joy now, because you're, you're, you're doing what I'm asking you to do, whether you feel comfortable or not. And you're riding on the hype and you're riding um, in my circuit and you're riding in my current, I'm taking you there. You're not, all you got to do is let go and go with the flow. I'm taking you there. All we have to do is to obey the instruction. God said this, God said that, get that, do this, do that. You want to see a miracle? Then 
follow the instructions. You're not just going to see a miracle like that. First of all, we got to preach on it. We got to teach on it. We got to teach on the supernatural. We got to teach on miracles. But then the other thing is that when God says something in your ear, just do it. Just do it. And it, it seems like, it, it feels like it's really simple, but then when he tell us to do it, can we do it? You know, can we do it? I was in the home that I, I am in now. I had to give this up. I didn't know if I was coming back to this. It was, it was 2003. God brought us down here. 2002, God brought us down here. And I, I started, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. Planting my flowers. I was, I mean, myself. I wasn't getting no workmen doing it for me. I would get wallpaper and I would put it up and I would, you know, taking my time and doing this by myself at the time. Uh, uh, my husband was, you know, out of, out of town for a little while. So it was just me and my kids and I was taking care of this. Like this was a baby. And then the Lord walked up on me and said, can you give this up? And so there's times that he will ask you to give it up. Amen. But when I gave it up, I didn't know I was coming back here, but this was a seed. And not only did I get this back, but another seed is coming. Cause then he say, I'm going to give you a hundredfold. But I truly believe that's what the Lord is saying. He's saying there's fire. There is fire going on. But that which is being burned needs to be burned in order for you to move on to the next thing. Remember, it's when we are willing to step out, possibly fall, possibly fail, but still getting up, still dusting off still letting go and still moving on that we truly find our rites of passage through these doors of success this has been another recording right here at the fortress of solitude where the superhero meets the supernatural again this is k star from the flow check back weekly for another episode of the superhero supernatural flow have a blessed and prosperous week.